Dating apps have revolutionized the way people meet. You know, in the olden times, you go to the bar and you speak to like different ladies and then you try to get them. Now everybody's like on dating apps. For better? I didn't have much to hope with, but luckily, she decided to go on a date with me. I almost didn't swipe right at him because I thought he had a mustache. <laughs> or worse. I don't think online dating is the best way to meet people at all. I feel like it's more for hookup culture. A lot of people are kind of on them to be on them. More than one fish picture, like fish, deer, fish, deer, because there's more life than deer and fish. Dating's hard. It's always been hard for people throughout history. That said, I think that Hinge, at its heart and in its soul, it's really about helping people get out on a great date in real life and like find their person. In 2011, Justin McLeod was a Harvard grad student who wanted to solve his dating woes. The 27-year-old invested his own money to start Hinge, a dating platform the company says is designed to be deleted. I'm deleting you. I mean, that's incredible. Right. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. It really describes how every piece of the app is really about getting you off the app and out on a great date. What started out as a small company that struggled to compete with now billion dollar giants like Tinder has grown to become one of the most popular apps in the dating space. There are three numbers to look out for in this story. $12,000, the amount of Justin's personal money he invested to start Hinge. $25 million, the amount the company sold for in 2018 and $396 million, Hinge's direct revenue for 2023. This is Founder Effect. I'm Justin McLeod, I'm the founder and CEO of Hinge. I came from a family of entrepreneurs. In high school, I ended up starting a web and software development company called WebWhammo, which is so embarrassing. Though he excelled academically in high school and college, Justin struggled with addiction to drugs and alcohol. I felt kind of like lonely in a crowd. I was like always around people, but never really felt like I was good at connecting with people. I remember waking up on the day I graduated college, which was also the day I decided to get sober, and I just was walking home that morning, kind of hungover. I remember just thinking like the steering wheel to my life was broken. Like I had this all these ideas and dreams, and I want to be successful. But like every single day, the action that I was doing that day was like not leading me towards where I wanted to go. After graduating from Colgate University in 2006, Justin entered rehab. He spent the next several years working in management consulting before heading to Harvard Business School in 2009. When I got to business school, it was the first time I was back in a really intense kind of social situation without the crutch of drugs and alcohol. And I was searching for connection and one of the biggest sources of connection I gravitated to was finding a romantic partner. And it was just hard for me at the time. Hinge originally, originally started, we were throwing a last chance dance party at business school. So we built something on Facebook so that you could like list people who were like your Facebook friends and people are gonna list their crushes. And if two people listed each other, we would let you know that you had like match. And that was fun and a lot of people did that. And then the idea though that spawned out of that was like, what if we built a friends of friends app? People my age were not really using online dating because usually it was on desktop websites and most of the services cost a lot of money and you'd fill out these like really long, intimate profiles about yourself. It felt like you were kind of like waving the white flag on your dating life, that you like had trouble meeting people. And people didn't want to admit that they had trouble meeting people, especially in their 20s when they're theoretically around a lot of other friends. So I wanted to create something that was simple and easy and fun and approachable that people like me would want to use to find a partner. Justin graduated business school with a job offer from the consulting firm McKinsey. He took his signing bonus and put it straight into Hinge, which at the time was being developed as a website. I started working out with a friend of mine from business school, Francis, and we each put in $12,000. We hired a development team down in Argentina to build us a prototype of this original Hinge idea. Even though he cashed the check, Justin never did settle on a start date at McKinsey. I think it had been like two years of me pushing it off. But when the idea for Hinge came, it just lit me up in a way. It's almost like I couldn't not work on it. And they finally got word that I had started Hinge and um, called me up and asked for their money back. I think my mom was quite disappointed that she got to tell everyone that I was at Harvard Business School and then at McKinsey, and now she had to tell them that I was unemployed working on a dating website. In 2011, the most popular dating platform was Match.com which had been around since the 90s. 
Justin struggled to convince investors that young people would even want to date online. The pitch was that like people my age weren't using these services. It was like clearly not a saturated market. He also felt that Hinge had the potential to thrive with the rise of smartphones and social media. The other thing about dating websites at the time is you would hide behind a screen name, but people are now used to Facebook. They're used to having like a real social presence online with their real name and their real photos. So it wasn't a big leap to ask people to essentially just like connect their social accounts and be their real selves online. In 2012, the team used their last $25,000 to scrap their website and build an app from the ground up. Two months later, they introduced the app with a huge launch party in Washington, D.C. We were really spending our last money on this launch party. And not only that, we submitted the app to the App Store and we weren't getting approval. We'd submitted like a week and a half in advance, day after day after day. We were literally on the eve of the launch party and had no app to actually launch. And then somehow, miraculously, the morning of the launch party, it actually got released by the App Store so that people could download it on the day. We invited 2,000 people from DC and you had to download the app in order to get into the party. When everyone got there and saw each other using it, it like created that initial inertia, sort of critical mass that we needed. And we made, I think, more matches the next day than we had in the entire history of Hinge prior to that. And then it just kept growing day after day after that. By 2014, dating apps were having a moment and Hinge was seeing some early success. We had hundreds of thousands of users. We were popular in major cities like New York and San Francisco and DC and Boston. That same year, Hinge reached beyond the American market, arriving in the UK, Canada, Australia, and India. But there was competition and Tinder led the pack. Its app asking users to swipe left or right on primarily photo-based profiles. The way young people were meeting potential partners was shifting. With the popularity of the apps, also came backlash, including a Vanity Fair story titled The Dawn of the Dating Apocalypse. Which was all about people using dating apps for just like hookups and how it had ruined dating culture. And it was just like a real moment of reflection for me on a couple fronts. One is that growth for us was starting to stall. We'd had some success, but other apps that were very similar to us were outpacing us in terms of growth. They were just even more simple and clean and more fun than ours. And the other thing was just it wasn't the company that I wanted to build. The reputation of being this kind of like superficial hookup thing was just like so antithetical to what I originally tried to build, which was for someone who's searching for really deep and intimate connection to be able to like find your person. In 2015, Hinge once again set about rebooting its app laying off about half of the company in the process. We went on a retreat where we talked about how we wanted to stop focusing on the competition and instead really build a product that was about getting people on great dates. That was our North Star metric. Hinge abandoned the swiping feature and instead encouraged users to engage with profiles of potential dates. The app added prompts for users to fill out, hoping to help matches break the ice and show off their personalities. The app also asks if users met their matches in real life and how their date went. The mission of Hinge and the way that we approach what we do is so critical and important of an app that's actually aligned with our users' needs of making them feel a sense of connection, helping them get out on real life dates and spend more time off the app than they spend on the app. When the app relaunched in 2016, it made a short-lived attempt to ditch its free tier, charging users $7 a month to join. In a dating app, you really need critical mass. You need a lot of people using the product so that people can find their person. And limiting it to the people who would pay a month was like a total non-starter. So we had to retire that. It was 2017, about a year after the reboot. We were now starting to run out of cash. And the reboot did not look like a screaming success from the outside. We had a couple hundred thousand users. We were actually down from our high, from our old version of the app. That said, the core metrics, when we looked at people's rates of success, when we looked at how we were attracting women to the platform, it was really, really promising. It was very hard to convince VCs when we just looked at the top line of, you know, well, declining users and all this stuff, it like, didn't look like an attractive business. But to the trained eye, to, to someone like Match Group, they could see that there were some like stirrings of something really interesting going on. Match Group, which owns other online dating giants like Tinder, Match.com, and OkCupid, made an initial investment in Hinge in 2017. The following year, it purchased the company for $25 million. So there was this really great magic that happened because they needed an app that was sort of positioned more intentionally, but for younger people, and we needed their expertise, and it turned out to be a very fruitful partnership. It's kind of hard to separate Hinge's story from that acquisition because when that acquisition occurred, we had a couple hundred thousand users and no revenue. 
and 20 employees. Now we have 300 employees and hundreds of millions in revenue. Hinge's revenue has been steadily growing since the acquisition. In 2023, it brought in $396 million. And while Hinge doesn't share its total number of users, it currently has about 1.4 million paying customers. We didn't get distracted with very short-term thinking about engagement and retention and time and app and number of matches and all these other things that you could very easily get distracted by and really kept our eye on, are we getting people out on dates that they're enjoying or not? Because when they do that, then they're out talking to their friends at brunch. Their friends are asking how they met. They met on Hinge because it's actually effective at getting people on dates. And then the word of mouth growth that came from that has really been the driver of our success. But as the novelty of dating online fades, some fatigue and skepticism may be setting in. Stock prices for Match Group and Bumble have plunged more than 70% since their all-time highs in 2021. As user growth stalls amid a saturated market, apps may be looking for ways to monetize, but not everyone wants to pay up. Would you ever pay for a dating app? I would not. No, never. No, definitely not. <laughs> no. no, absolutely not. I would not pay for a dating app. For Hinge, the plan is to continue to evolve with the times. Meeting people can be hard, whether it's in person or online. But the apps do have success stories. He sent me a message and invited me to go on a date, and then it was pretty good. We met in 2022 and got married in 2023 in January. We got married 2023 last year. We met two and, two and a half years, years ago. <laughs> and yeah, it's been great. For now, Hinge will continue to stay close to its North Star metric, connection. We spend way too much time on our, our screens and not enough time in real life connecting. These apps are designed to like take our attention and put it wherever they can sort of sell advertising space. And Hinge just try to create a model for how you can really align with your user's deepest need, which is to create a sense of intimacy and connection and belonging. And it's not designed around like keeping you glued to your screen.